The Detroit community is gathering for Samantha Wool's funeral, which starts momentarily. Wool was the president of a Detroit synagogue who was found stabbed to death outside of her home yesterday morning. Police still working to determine the motive and suspects in the killing. Wool had a strong connection to Detroit's Jewish and political communities. The many who loved her are gathering at the Hebrew Memorial Chapel in Oak Park. That and funeral is happening right now, so we'll take you to the live stream. You wish to continue after the service here. We will meet you ap approximately 20 minutes after the conclusion of the services here at Machpelah Cemetery. There won't be a formal procession. I'd like to remind everyone to please silence your cell phones.
Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A poet once visited with bereaved friends tried to console them on their loss. Despite their elo his eloquence and poetic ability, he discovered that words were hard to find, and he wrote, We who would be their friends are dumb. Words from our lips but feebly come. We feel as we extend our hands that one power only understands and truly knows the reason why so beautiful a soul must die. We realize how helpless then are all the gifts of mortal men. No words which we have power to say can take the sting of grief away, but that power which marks the sparrow's fall must comfort and sustain us all. There are no adequate words today with which to try to mitigate our pain or console. That's why we've come together in despair and we acknowledge that words are of little help perhaps our just being here together will have to suffice to express the sentiment which goes beyond words. It is um, nearly impossible to believe that Sam is gone so suddenly and so tragically. Her death leaves us sad at the thought of unfinished years, and yet we will try today to find some sort of consolation from memories that we have. And we're fortunate today to have several people who are going to share memories and speak about Sam. First, we're going to invite her sister Monica and brother-in-law Ben to share words about Sam. Dear Sam, how is this your funeral? I do not understand. I can't ima imagine life without you. I've never had a life without you. You were my life. You were the kindest, most generous human I've ever met. Whenever someone would say, tell me about your sister, I would answer, there was literally not anyone more caring or thoughtful than you. If someone complimented something of yours, you took it off and gave it to them. <laughs> there is nothing you wouldn't do for your family and friends. Your soul was beautiful and pure. You loved with all your heart. You never said no, but how can I help? You loved my kids as your own. The bond you shared with them will always remain in our hearts. You were the glue of our family. You were my older sister. You taught me. You protected me. You loved me with all your heart. You so deeply wanted peace for this world. You fought for everyone, regardless of who they were or where they came from. You were the definition of a leader. Our world is shattered without you. You brought us light. The last text message you sent was a heart to a friend, just because. You sent hearts to cheer people up and let them know you were thinking of them because you cared. The outpouring of love for you today is a token to your many friendships. There isn't a soul on this planet who didn't adore you. Yesterday, after you passed, one of your friends received flowers from you that you had sent before your end. Happy birthday. Wishing you many, many, many more. You are the greatest gift of all. Love always and forever. Sam, Paul, Laura, Margot, Doug, Mani, Ben, 
Sally, Gavi, Mira. That was you, Sam. You didn't even ask. You just sent flowers and signed 10 other people's names. <laughs> because you knew it would make the receiver happy. And the others would have wanted to say happy birthday if they knew it was your birthday. <laughs> you were an artist. You made beautiful paintings that hang in our homes in my office. You loved learning languages, opera. You loved teaching my kids. Anything. Judaism, Spanish. They soaked up whatever knowledge you imparted on them. You brought them books from around the world. Every birthday was markers and books. You wanted to open their eyes and let them be create creative. You brought them stickers, political stickers, for whatever campaign you were on at the time. <laughs> they loved learning about politics with you. A friend of mine wrote yesterday about Sam. Sam dedicated her life to creating opportunity for everyone, everywhere. She was a model citizen, a model Jewish citizen, who forged a path for herself and countless others to feel more connected with local community, Israel, and the whole of humanity. Teaching kindness matters, and so does living it. We will do well to follow in Sam's footsteps, even when others in our midst choose not to. Sam, I feel like I'm about to wake up from a horrible nightmare, and you will be next to me, hugging me and holding me. This was not supposed to happen. I will never understand why it did. A light has gone out in Detroit, in our hearts, for our people, for the world. Ma asita kol demei achicha toakim elai min ha'adama. What have you done? Hark! Your brother's blood cries out to me from earth. Your memory will be a blessing. I promise you that. And I promise to take care of mom and dad always. We love you so much. Sam, I miss you already. I will always cherish our, the post-Shabbat dinner kitchen cleanups, you and I being the principal night owls of the family, happily doing dishes while reminiscing about the prior week. There are very few people in this world that will stay up with me until the wee hours of the morning, talking about cooking, politics, sports, artificial intelligence, Taylor Swift, quantum physics, some subjects you knew way more about me than others, and vice versa but your ability to be engaged with the person in front of you, absorbed in the conversation and truly listening and connecting is a talent that I will always admire and respect. On a personal level, you are not just my wife's sister, but you are my rock and my best friend. Stepping out just one degree, you are the definition of a perfect aunt to my children, to our children. I cannot thank you enough for the nine years that you gave to our kids, putting them ahead of other commitments without even being asked, making sure that they were fully taken care of and happy. I'm sorry that I was ever upset about the number of gifts, markers, coloring books <laughs> that you gave them. I understand now that you loved them so, so much and they loved you too. You were the most loving daughter I have ever known. Regardless of anything going on, making your parents happy was your number one priority and you made them proud. Whether they went through a surgery and needed rides or just someone to sit with, you were there. You were always there. I wanted to write next about how much you meant to your community, but I couldn't because you don't just have one community that you support. You were the rock and the anchor of so many communities, and you had one goal, to bring people together. A few weeks ago, even before the situation in Israel, we were having a somewhat heated family email discussion, which we sometimes have, and you ended your beautiful email with the following line. If and where there are disconnects between some of the people who follow Black Lives Matter and the Jewish community, then our communities need to engage with each other more, not less. This is your legacy that we will always remember and carry forward. 
I wanted to end with a story about Parshat Noach, which we read yesterday, which was given, this story was taken from a eulogy for Rabbi Neuberger, who served as the Rosh Hashiva of near Israel in Baltimore for many years. Like this rabbi, Sam was known for not resting until every detail for success of an undertaking was covered. Sam had an extraordinary attention to detail and an extraordinary sense of responsibility for all people. So what does this have to do with Noach? It says Noach did not leave the ark until he was commanded by HaKadosh Baruch Hu to do so. If he was to wait for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, for his command, then why earlier did Noach bother to send the raven and the dove to see if the land was dry enough to get off the boat and live on the land? Why didn't Noach just wait for the command? Noach was charged with saving all of humanity and the animals and the birds. He carried this responsibility squarely on his shoulders. Being responsible for something means ensuring every detail is taken care of. So Noah had to investigate himself whether the land was dry enough for living. So even though Noah was going to wait for HaKadosh Baruch Hu's command to go, it did not mitigate his responsibility to do what was needed. When the world was flooding around her, Sam took charge. She did not wait for God to make things right, even if she had faith that God would. Sam, what you accomplished in your short life most don't accomplish in many lifetimes. You are a light upon your nation and all the nations. May your memory be a blessing. We're now going to invite Sam's cousin Jennifer to share some words with us. This is the worst day of my life. This is the worst day for all of us sitting here right now. Samantha was my cousin, and I love her very much. And and one, if there's one thing that I want everyone in this room and everyone who's watching this to remember, is her smile. She walked into the room and she lit up with a light that warmed all of us. Her soul warmed all of us. She was quick to laugh. She was quick to make others laugh because deep down she wanted to put other people at ease, other people at peace and to bring them together. And that's what she did. Samantha, we love you so much. You will always, always be with us. Thank you. I miss you. We're now going to invite Rabbi Ariana Silverman from the uh, Isaac Avery Downtown Synagogue to uh, speak about Sam. Each Shabbat, when Sam would come into the sanctuary, she would catch my eyes and she would smile. And as many of you know, and as Jennifer said, Sam's incredible smile was contagious. And so no matter what I was doing, I couldn't help but smile back. And on Shabbat morning, Sam's smile was full of joy, affirming she was in a place she loved, doing what she loved with the people that she loved. And each week, if you looked carefully, you may have seen that Sam and I had a coded language of nods and winks and raised eyebrows as we silently checked in. She would communicate her wordless Hineni, here I am. Hineni, she was fully present and ready to serve, to chant Haftarah beautifully, or to greet a newcomer to the synagogue or to grab an extra chair. When I would thank her for chanting Torah or Haftarah, she would reply, thank you for the honor. 
And this past week, when I told her how excited I was that at an upcoming bat mitzvah, we would have multiple women chanting Torah, she echoed my excitement and added, Laning Torah is a feminist act. <laughs> the title of Isaac Agri, Downtown Synagogue Board President, does not begin to describe how integral Sam was to our community, how much love she put into it, or how much she was loved. Sam did so many things as president, serving on our ritual committee, working on a building renovation, and celebrating its reopening, spearheading our next fundraising push, setting the agenda for the board, and all the details that arose. But over all of that, her priority was to engage with people. Sam had an amazing willingness to listen carefully to each and every person with whom she spoke. She certainly had her own convictions, but she would really listen to different ideas and had the remarkable ability to say, let me think about it and I will get back to you. Wow. And because of her passion and joy and love and wisdom and willingness to listen, Sam had a uniquely special personal relationship with countless people across lines of faith and race and politics and all of the things that usually divide us. So many people think of her as someone with whom they had a particularly close or important relationship, and each of them is right. Every single one of you. And of course, there was no one she loved more than her family. And I know she was especially proud whenever you came to the synagogue or whenever she spoke to me about you. And I know that if she wasn't there on Shabbat, it was often because she was with you, exactly where she needed to be. Sam would frequently be called to the Torah for an aliyah. And although I usually ask for Hebrew names for aliyot, I knew hers. And because I didn't need to ask, she would smile and say, Toda, and my Hebrew name. Shira Malka, Bat Ben Sion Vimazel. Thank you for the honor of having you as our community's leader and my teacher. When we greet a newcomer and pull up an extra chair, we will see your smile. You have transformed the lives of countless people. I love you. Your memory will be a blessing. Call on Rabbi Asher Lopatin, Executive Director of the Jewish Community Relations Council, American Jewish Committee. Rabbi Ariana, how blessed you were to be Sam's rabbi. How blessed we were to have Sam, to have an angel with us. And I know that Sam, as an angel, is still smiling. And we'll add one thing, Jennifer, smiling and nodding and nodding <laughs> and incredibly affirming. And as Rabbi Ariana said, there are so many diverse people that each one had a relationship and we have in this room Muslims and Hindus and Catholics and Christians and 
Jews and all kinds of races and everyone, everyone loved Sam and was affirmed by Sam. Our rabbis, not our rabbis, our prophets talk about the angels. Nichnasim lumatsrafim azbekol rash gadol. With a great sound, the angels come in. They come in with passion, with conviction that Sam had tremendously. Progressive conviction. Conviction for her community. Conviction for Israel. The angels come in, but then le'umatam baruch yomeru, or le'umatam meshabchim ve'omrim. They look at each other. They face each other. They listen to each other. And Sam was an incredible, active listener. And you could see her taking in the words you were saying, trying to finish your sentences sometimes, taking that in. Everything that we need for our world today, everything that the JCRC, AJC stands for, bringing people together, listening, affirming, loving, while keeping your own passions and your strength and your dignity. Everything was what Sam did and represented. And hearing from beginnings with uh, Hanukkah, Diwali, and a relationship with the Hindu community, and then the inspiration for the work we do with the African American community and the Muslim community, with young people, bringing people together, that you can be friends, you can unite across the political divide. One of Sam's admirers said you can break with the binary nature sometimes of politics. You can cross the religious divide and the racial divide. And all that without compromising who you are. Because every picture you see of Sam and Boy, so many people have shared so many beautiful pictures of her smile. But she's also confident. She's joyous. She's loving. She's passionate. And she's proud of who she was. And she's both social. So many people that just in the last 20, 12 hours I've seen were connected to her for social reasons, for, you know, whether it was access, whether whatever it was, and then social justice reasons and social action reasons, whatever that connection was. She was a doer. She was there. She was there for us. I wanted to end with one one beautiful piece from our Parsha, from this coming Parsha, where Abraham is fighting a battle and he meets Malki Tzedek, he meets a Gentile, someone not from his family, who blesses him. And Abraham, rather than just taking that blessing, gives Maser, gives a gift to that person. Sam... The world of Malki Tzedek bless you. And you reached out to the world of Malki Tzedek. You were there, whether marching in civil rights down south. You were there joining coalitions for black and Jewish unity. You were there standing up. You were there showing up. You were there for all the Malki Tzedeks in the world. And you were there also for the Jewish people as well and committed to your Jewish community. And it wasn't always easy mixing the Malki Tzedeks with the Jewish people, but somehow your grace and your smile and your listening did it. The angels, Lumatam Baruch Yomeru, that face each other, that listen to each other, say Baruch, 
say blessed. And because of who you were, Sam, and because of who you continue to be smiling down upon us, somehow this very difficult and very divided world and very painful world for the Jewish people and for the world, Baruch Tomri, you will say blessed. You will blessed, bless us and your memory will always be alive in our hearts and a blessing for our world forever and ever. We're now going to invite uh, Attorney General for the State of Michigan, Dana Nessel, to share some words with us. Um, I feel like anything that I'm going to say is just not going to do um, Sam justice. Um, but weirdly, I know that if Sam was here, she'd be standing behind me and be like, whatever you say, it's going to be fine. It's going to be great. <laughs> and then afterwards, no matter how bad it would be, she'd be like, that was the best speech ever. You were really well done. So I'll just do my best. So. For anybody who's been following the tragic events of, I mean, it's just been like a day, it feels like a year, um, and you've seen the outpouring of statements made by all of those who knew Sam, um, what stands out to me is that these, these statements and these sentiments are all just so remarkably similar. You know, Sam was said to be kind and caring and compassionate, sincere, loving, a tenacious, advocate and supporter of social justice, a woman of great faith, with a passion for equal treatment for all people in every space. This was not an opinion. This was a fact. This wasn't just how Sam presented to some people. It was how Sam treated each and every person who ever came into her life. Sam was all things to all people, and somehow she was everywhere. She was omnipresent. I've been looking back at pictures of her. She was at every campaign event, um, every political protest, every religious service, every uh, ribbon cutting. I think I saw her in a picture of the moon landing. <laughs> I, I don't know how she could be so many places at the same time. So Sam worked um, on my re-election campaign as a staffer, and she embodied all of the characteristics that you simply cannot teach a person, you know? Her passion, her boundless energy, her willingness to do anything, anything, uh, and her innate need to always give back and do good. Um, on the campaign trail, Sam was the Gary to my Selena Meyer. <laughs> If anybody watches Veep, you know what I'm talking about. She was just always so prepared. Anything that anybody needed. Um, you want some chapstick? Boom. Sam had it. Stickers? She got you. A nail file? She was there. Flyers? Boom. Candy? Uh, you know, a tuna fish sandwich? Uh, a license plate from Ohio? Whatever it was. It was somehow carried in Sam's world's largest swag bag uh, that she took everywhere where she would just magically appear with anything anyone ever needed. She was the first person on the scene of every event and the last to leave. And again, she always maintained her ever-present enormous grin, no matter what the circumstances were. Rain or shine, 90% immunity or a cyclone, um, you know, Sam and I uh, shared um, the same Jufro that we would normally get from those events, but she always had a giant floppy hat and a clashing scarf. Uh, no one knew why. That was just Sam. She could seamlessly engage in any crowd, any crowd at all, um, no matter where we were. It didn't matter if we were at the Cherry Festival or a Pride Parade or at the Renaissance Festival, um, 
Sam knew how to sticker crowds of thousands of people, oftentimes without them even knowing that they were now advertising for whatever candidate it was she was working on. Um, she could charm everyone. She charmed celebrities and naysayers alike. Her warmth could persuade even the hardest heart of the loudest heckler who would finally come along and be like, you know what? If you like this person, then I like that person too. Sam gave everything of herself, but she asked for nothing in return. This fact was repeatedly demonstrated by Sam's reluctance to bother our team with critical information related to her diet. <laughs> Sam had food allergies to everything. <laughs> Wheat, dairy, grains, nuts, kiwi fruit, you name it, Sam would have an anaphylactic re reaction to eating it. I'm actually not still sure what she survived on at all. But I do know that she never wanted to burden anyone else with her dietary restrictions. So even when we would try to place a special order for her, Sam would respond, I don't want anyone going out of my way for me. I'm fine with this ice water. <laughs> she only ever wanted to be of assistance to others, and she never asked for help in return. Samantha Wool may have been the nicest person that I have ever met or will ever meet in my lifetime. Now, I know as of this minute, we still don't know who the monster is, who took Sam from us, or what possible reason there would be for God to allow a person such as her to be taken so soon. But Sam did more for our community, our state, our world, our lives, in her short time here on earth than most will ever accomplish in a thousand lifetimes over. And her killer will not rob us of the memory of her joy and warmth and kindness that she leaves behind in all of us and in all she's done. And we always will thank God for allowing Sam to have touched our lives the way that she did. In life or in death, we will always love you, Sam. And we will always be grateful for your existence. I'd like to invite State Senator Stephanie Chang to share words with us. Sam was endlessly positive. She was brilliant. She was so kind and accepting to every single person. She was creative and she was full of energy and love. She had the biggest heart and the most beautiful smile. She loved her family, she loved Detroit, and she loved her faith. She was passionate about social justice and about equity. One friend described Sam as her constant, her rock, her cheerleader, and her friend who was there by her side. Another friend said that Sam radiated love, kindness, generosity, and truly lived out faith in action every day and in every interaction. I am so honored to have been Sam's friend. When she helped out as a volunteer in my first campaign in this, for the State House in 2014, she and I knocked on a lot of doors together, and she had a way of always being helpful. So I remember the first time that I used an iPad to keep track of the doors that we were doing. And I was really not doing it very well and not doing it very efficiently. And Sam, being the helpful person that she is, calmly explained to me some really basic things that I probably should have known about how to use an iPad. And then we kept going. Uh, but she just instantly knew how to be helpful without making me feel totally ridiculous. In July, 
Sam came to an event that I had, and my older daughter and a friend's daughter um, made up a number board game called Flip Down Number, and they wrote an entire page of rules that they came up with, and I have no idea what any of the rules were, but you know who did know and who could probably tell you if she were here today? Sam Wall. She listened to the girls explain this long list of rules and asked a lot of questions of these girls in the most sincere way. My friend's daughter was so excited that an adult was asking her to explain rules and was actually listening to her. Sam was a really, really good listener. And she respected every person, no matter their age and no matter the topic. Many of Sam's best traits as a person and as a friend actually are represented in her skills as a campaign manager that I saw firsthand for many months last year. She really knew how to build a team and make sure that everyone felt valued. She made every volunteer feel included, no matter how many hours they were dedicating towards the campaign. So just like her skills as a campaign manager and bringing a team together in her non-campaign life, just as a human being, as a friend, as a citizen, she was actually just constantly connecting people and bringing people together. And she was always making people feel valued and feeling included in the community. And I know that she was bringing people from the Jewish and Muslim faiths together. Yesterday, I heard throughout the day, both from friends who are Jewish and friends who are Muslim, and of course, many, many others who were friends with Sam and cared about her. It was so clear that her interfaith work will continue on and last a long, long time through the impact that she made on her friends of many, many religious beliefs. After October 7th, she and I had been texting about connecting with groups who were helping civilians on the ground. And I know from talking to her directly and also from hearing from leaders from both the Jewish community and the Muslim community that within the past week, she was actively talking with community leaders and making those connections with the goal of helping other human beings. Over the past day, I have heard from so many people who called or texted about how they just recently caught up with Sam. They had coffee or they had lunch and how she was making some new connection for them or making some difference in some way. I also heard from friends who told me that their lives would be different if not for something that Sam did for them. I saw Sam on Friday evening at the wedding of our friends Miriam and Jake. She was so happy and she was having so much fun. We talked about how excited she was about a new job and I asked how things were going at the downtown synagogue as well as in Lafayette Park, my former neighborhood and her neighborhood. When I said goodbye to her as my daughter and I were about to go home, she was chatting it up with the couple sitting next to us at the table that she had just met. And of course, being who she was, they had already become friends and were engrossed in some deep conversation. I'm so, so glad that my last memories of Sam are of happiness and love. I know from talking to many friends over the past day that her presence on this earth and her friendship inspired many of us to become better people. We are so fortunate to have had Sam in our lives, and I hope that each of us will remember Sam for the beautiful human being that she was, and as someone who loved bridging divides, and as someone who was a promoter of justice, equity, and being welcoming to all people. She inspired people through her actions and through her kindness. May Sam's memory be a blessing, and may she continue to inspire us each day. We're going to invite uh, Sam's friend, Paul, to share some words with us. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks uh, for allowing me to speak. Uh, Sam and I became friends in college at the University of Michigan and um, stayed friends through that whole time. Um, 
I want to share a couple of things with you guys about Sam. Um, when we first became friends at University of Michigan, on Friday we would talk before she went to Hillel, and I would be. This is when we were first becoming friends, and I would be like, "Oh, okay, you're going to go to services," and she's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Okay, I'll be here. I'll be there later." And inevitably, Friday after Friday, there Sam would meet me wherever we talked about, and there would be two or three people I had never met before. She would go to Hillel. Whoever was at Hillel that Friday was coming out with Sam that night and going to hang out with everybody. That's the kind of way she was. Sam believed that that's how you build community. And I think that's a good lesson for everybody here today. Um, when um, uh, we got older, uh, and moved back to Detroit. I, um, Sam loved to travel. Sam traveled everywhere. When um, the financial crisis hit and European governments were imposing austerity measures, Sam happened to be in Europe at the time. So when the poor people of Spain occupied their squares because their governments were trying to impose prosperity measures on them for the financial greed of banksters, Sam wasn't staying in her hotel anymore. She occupied that square too. And I thought that was such a cool story. And this was before the Occupy movement had made it to the United States of America. So I was like, what do you, and she's like, yeah, people just put up tents. She said there, was, there were internet stations. She was describing what Occupy was before. Sam eventually moved in with me and we spent some time at Occupy Detroit later on that time, and I think um, that tells you a lot about how she chose to interact with the world. She wasn't going to go to the art museums when she traveled. She was going to be and see the, what the world really had to tell um, her. Um, I, a lot of people were talking about Sam loving to give gifts. And Sam always gave gifts, little gifts, big gifts. She always had gifts. Doug, I asked her once where that came from, and she told me it was you. That was the way that you showed love, and that was the way she shared her love with her friends. Um, when Sam and I lived together, uh, we used to watch Parks and Rec all the time. And Parks and Rec is a story of a woman a, in a small Indiana town who is a politician that believes in her dreams and lives in her head a lot. And I, and I always used to laugh about, I'm like, you know, isn't Leslie Nope so funny? Isn't it so great? And, and Sam would be like, yeah, but I like Ann Perkins too. Ann Perkins was a simple, matter-of-fact nurse who the head-in-the-sky politician had convinced to join and brought her in. Sam identified the power of that relationship. She knew that there will be times in her life when she'll be Leslie Nope, and there will be times in her life when she'll be Ann Perkins, and she knew that that's how the world worked around. There were times when we played that role for each other all the time. The, um, this summer we went to go see the Barbie movie, and during the Barbie movie, she said to me, she's like, I don't like how they're calling her weird Barbie, you know. That was like a pejorative. <laughs> and, and she didn't, like, you know, it's a very positive movie, and she didn't like that someone was being called a name. And then, it, for those of you who've seen at the very end, they make a lot, there is a joke about that, and they address that issue. And after, she said, I'm so glad that they cleared that up and that they, and that they, they took care of that. Um... The, uh, a few nights, uh, Andy, our friend, um, works with Audra McDonald, and a number of times Sam and Andy got us tickets to see Audra McDonald, and one night we went to go see, this is when she did her standard CD, and there were all these beautiful standards, and we were all engaged and listening, and then Audra McDonald goes, oh, this is from a new Broadway musical about 9-11. And I was like, okay. And, and, I, and I kind of like checked out. And um, the, uh, the, um, 
the, the name of the song is called I'll Be Here, and it's about when you lose someone to tragedy and how we move forward going forward. But I wasn't listening to the words. I wasn't really engaged, and I looked over at Sam, and tears were rolling down Sam's eyes because Sam was listening to the song. I implore you to all go find that song after. And then after I listened to it and I got it because Sam understood that, um, that, you know, what that means about being here for one another even when we're absent in ways that the world can't fix. And, we, and I know that there are still a lot of questions and so much of it is left unfixed and that um, we don't know. But I think that Sam would want us to look around the room and to know that we don't know where we're going, but we're going there together. Thank you. I'm going to ask, add just a few words about Sam after talking with her family just earlier today. And actually, the, when I sat down with you today, the first thing that Margot said about my relationship with Sam was to remind me that for about the first time I met Sam. And she shared with me the slogan, Coke kills. That's Coca-Cola, by the way. Um, when I think about, she was still, even now, she was a young woman. But then she was really a young woman. She was like 22 years old. She was very, I was like, I couldn't really, I didn't even know what that meant. What could that possibly mean? But uh, not surprisingly, she had a lot to say about um, the rainforest and about the water and about all sorts of things you can imagine. And um, uh, it uh, didn't stop me from drinking Coca-Cola right away, but, um, or at all actually, but <laughs> it did give me an insight into um, what Sam was about, and um, the way, in looking back, she translated that passion for society, near and far, uh, into her life, and um, really developed into a person who uh, went far beyond slogans into a life really dedicated to the world, the world around her, near and far, as you've heard. You know, um, Sam grew up at Congregation Beth Am. You heard she went to U of M. She was a student at Hillel Day School and at Cranbrook. Went to Camp Ramah. Went to Interlochen. I don't know that this part, the Interlochen part, came out as much today, but and I didn't really know this about her. Her, her love of music, of opera in particular, but love of music. She was an artist, a painter, a sculptor, jewelry making, metal work. I can only imagine in her busy life all of these projects could have uh, came and went in the context of all the other things that she was doing. She spent time in Israel. She spoke Hebrew fluently. She volunteered at a, maybe, maybe worked, I'm not sure, at a, a rape crisis center in Israel. You know, she, was, as was said this morning when I was talking with you, she believed in humanity which, of course, is um, a terrible irony for today. But um, she believed in that, and um, I think that she was bringing us on a journey with her. You know, there's a very famous teaching in Jewish tradition, right? It's not up to you to complete the task, but you are not free to desist from it. I think that's the story we've heard today. Certainly, someone who was not willing to desist from all of the hard work of repairing our world, creating a world, but not able to complete even her task because it was cut short. I can't help but think about the glass half full and what that really means, but I believe that we earn our place, each one of us, we earn our place over the course of our lives. And we earn it every day. 
Sometimes we do something so amazing, maybe we earn more than a day's worth. And as we, we are here together and we think about a life cut short and the promise unfulfilled, I would say quite the opposite. The glass is, the glass is overflowing. We wanted more, she wanted more, she deserved for sure more than this. But the glass and what we have received, what you have heard, what her family has received, what her friends, her community has received, is an overflowing fountain, overflowing glass. And we can be sad, as we are, and we can be nothing less than grateful. May Sam's memory be a blessing to us all. I ask all those who are able to please stand. And that was a look at the funeral service for prominent Jewish community leader and synagogue president Samantha Wohl. As of today, Detroit police have not given us an update on a suspect or a motive. Michigan State Police, as well as the FBI, also in assisting with that investigation. Of course, we will be continuing our coverage tonight. Continue to stick with us here at CBS News Detroit at 6.30 and 11 o'clock for those updates. Thanks for joining us this evening.